So, recently I talked about Eliash Peterson, the Canucks' fifth overall pick from this year's draft. Well, I want to start talking about Ollie O'Leary, who was the fifth overall pick for the Canucks in the last year's draft. And I'm going to say it right here. Ollie O'Leary is not, under any circumstances, a bust. Anybody who's labeling him a bust because of a bad camp is not smart. Anybody who's looking at what Yolivi did while wearing a Canucks jersey at the Canucks camp and defining his status for the future of this team through that is not smart. Because all Yolivi, he had a bad training camp. He was not noticeable in the preseason games. And overall, he had what some people would say as a lackluster August, September, playing with the Canucks, the Young Stars Tournament, he wasn't really that good. But, Ollie Olivi is not a bust. And, a lot of the consensus for people calling him a bust is taking a look at the 2016 draft and taking a look at the players taken after Olivi. In fact, the next six players taken after Oli Olivi have played at least four games in the NHL. Matthew Kachuk has played 86. So, the big comparison here in regards specifically to Olivi is, oh, he's a defenseman. He hasn't played a game yet. Look at Mikhail Sergachev, who's drafted ninth overall. Look at look at all the points he's getting with Stamkos, huh? Sergachev was the right choice. Olivi in comparison to Sergachev was a bust. And yeah, that, that's that's the end of the story. And, you know, that's kind of true. Mikhail Sergachev is doing fantastic wonders for the Tampa Bay Lightning, who isn't even the team that drafted him. So, does that mean that Mikhail Sergachev is automatically going to be a better defenseman overall than Oli Olivi and the Canucks made a bad decision in picking Olivi rather than picking the available Sergachev because, oh, they needed the defenseman? No! That doesn't, that's not what it means at all. The idea that just because Sergachev is playing now and he's getting, I mean, assists and goals and stuff, he's feeding Stammer like crazy, the idea that that automatically condemns the Canucks for picking another defenseman earlier on in the draft, four spots ahead, is ridiculous. Oli Olivi is a fantastic player, and I use that word a lot, fantastic, but it's so accurate to describe what Oli Olivi is doing for the TPS Turku right now. He didn't get any points in the first few games in the Liga. The Liga, by the way, the highest level of professional hockey in Finland... But now, he has four points in six games. Recently, he's, you know, he's been playing really nicely. He scored the overtime winner a little bit ago today. And he, along with Elias Peterson and Cole Lind, are definitely making strides in that whole idea of Canucks prospects. Because these guys are really bringing the team, and the future of the team it seems, forward onto the stage of, hey, it's gonna be good. Because Oli Olivi right now, he's good. The last season in London, 42 points in 58 games, that's the same amount of points he got in the two seasons ago run of the London Knights. However, of course, you know, the London Knights, they lose team, they lose players every year because they're always getting good players. Olivi just happened to be the next one to have lost out. And of course, you know, he's a defenseman. 42 points in 58 games, that's pretty darn good. Right now in the Liga, 4 points in 6 games. It's a small sample size, but he's solid. He's very, very solid as a player. And anyone condemning Olivi for not being Sergachev right now is not smart. Because Ole Olivi is not a bust. He's going to be a top 4 defenseman on this team. Does he have the potential to be a top 2? Absolutely. In my opinion, is it likely that he'll be a top two? Eh, no, I think he'll be a reliable top four guy. A guy who you could probably put on the first pairing once in a while, but a guy who will really strive as a top four player. And right now, at 19 years of age, playing in the Liga, playing for the TPS Turku, he's proving himself that, yeah, he belongs there. And he's doing well. He's playing his heart out over there on the TPS Turku, and, you know, it's good. It's pretty darn good for him. Amongst defensemen, um, Yolivi is down there. 
I mean, he is, like, what, in the top 50 of defensemen, but he hasn't played that many games. He's played six games. He just joined the team, and he's not going to make a, an immediate impact just like the other guys because, well, he's in the top 10 for points per game, and I know it's a small sample size, but he's darn good. Yolivi, give him the season to work with. Don't go out here calling him a bust just because he's not playing for the team right now like Sergachev is for the Lightning. Yolivi's going to be good, and the thing is we don't need him to be good right now. The reason we have guys playing across the world amongst North America is because they're not good enough for the NHL. And that's okay, we don't need them to be good for the NHL right now, we're not trying to win now. The only thing that we really should be wanting to win is the draft lottery. So... Just because Yolivi isn't playing with the NHL, isn't playing with the Canucks, doesn't mean he's a bust. Doesn't mean that Sergachev's automatically light years better and his potential is light years better. Just means that, well, Sergachev is at the right team at the right time. He's at the right level of skill amongst the organization that needs players of that skill level. And, you know, the Lightning are in kinda win now mode. They got Stamkos back, and he's doing really well. Kucherov, Stamkos, and Nemestikov, along with Sergachev, it's Stamkos with the four Russians carrying that gosh darn team. Ole Olivi is going to be good, guys. The Canucks aren't idiots for picking Olivi instead of Kachuk, Sergachev, or anybody else who they could have picked. Ole Olivi was a good pick, and he's going to be a top four defenseman on this team, hands down. Hope you guys enjoyed this is Fossing Slash Roll Select Nostra Gaming, and bye. <laughs>